If you believe the numbers they claim, Act for America may be the largest anti-Muslim organization in the US, lobbying for Trump's travel ban, for blocking the entry of refugees and immigrants, reinforcing fear of Muslims by pushing legislation that combats the non-existent spread of Sharia, and holding anti-Muslim rallies with armed protesters. Act for America has mainstreamed itself to a point where members of Congress regularly appear at their conferences. The group is led by Brigitte Gabriel, who argues that America must define Islam itself as the enemy and says that practicing Muslims cannot be loyal citizens to the US. This of course is the mirror image of well-known anti-Semitic propaganda long used to question the loyalty of the American Jewish community. Gabriel blusters about the imaginary Muslim takeover of America, claiming that radical Muslims have infiltrated every arm of government and law enforcement. She makes outrageously unsupported claims that render the average American terrified of any Arab or Muslim they interact with. There are at least 10 cells in the city of Denver. If you live in the city of Denver today, you have shaken hands with a terrorist, you have exchanged money with a terrorist, you maybe have sat next to a terrorist in a movie theater, you have crossed by a terrorist when you were shopping, in our own community. She even goes after Arab Americans and American Muslims as entire communities, accusing them of being so un-American that they would harbor terrorists among them. Those cells are harbored by the local Muslim communities. Those cells do not operate independently or in secret. Those cells operate within, are protected by, supported by the local Islamic communities. I come from the Middle East. I come from the Arabic culture. There is no such thing as, oh, well, we didn't know about them. Everybody knows everybody's business in any local community, Arabic community in America. Not only does Gabriel exploit uninformed people to breed irrational fear and hatred, she also does it to market herself as some kind of Middle East expert where she sprinkles bigotry on top of cartoonishly simplistic analysis, urging the audience to dispose of the facts and just boil everything down to Arabs and Muslims being terrible people. So what's the Israeli-Palestinian conflict about? Israel can pull out of all the territories. It's not a matter of geography. The Arabs hate the Jews, period. And why did the complex Lebanese civil war break out? The Muslims, once the call of Islam was declared, especially with the Palestinians, all the Muslims went with the Palestinians. The Muslims started massacring the Christians, literally. What's the difference between Israel and the Arab world? The difference, my friends, between Israel and the Arabic world is a difference between civilization and barbarism. It's a difference between goodness and evil. And this is what we're witnessing in the Arabic world. They have no soul. They are dead set on killing and destruction. In one unhinged rant that was supposed to be attacking anti-Semites, she herself ended up making the anti-Semitic claim that Jews are predisposed to victimization. Now, of course, any critical thinking person can immediately see through these grotesque caricatures. But critical thinking in the current climate has really become a rare commodity. So much so that Gabriel has become emboldened to just make things up. The Jews are classified in the Quran as najis. Yeah. The word najis in Arabic means filth. Nope. The Quran does not call the Jews Najis. That's just made up. In Jordan, looking, Abdullah has 2% support. Yeah. That's it. Nope. No credible poll has ever put the popularity of the King of Jordan at just 2%. She just made that figure up. He said the radicals are estimated to be between 15 and 25%. 15% who are easy, 15% who are as easily willing to bomb a Muslim wedding as they are willing to bomb a temple or a church. When you look at 15 to 25 percent of the world Muslim population, you're looking at 180 million to 300 million people dedicated to the destruction of Western civilization. Where does that statistic come from? That statistic comes from the combined intelligence of the Australians, the Canadians, the Jordanians, the Israelis, the United States. This figure is based on all the intelligence from all the civilized world, France, Britain, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, everywhere. Yep, you guessed it. That's also made up. After this talk at the University of Memphis, Gabriel and friends claimed that a group of shouting Muslims swarmed her on stage in a threatening fashion, forcing up to 10 police officers to rush in and hustle her out. I know this was a lie because I was personally there and saw that none of it had happened. The university was so shocked by the claims that they interviewed their security officers and refuted those claims in the school newspaper line by line. Something else happened at this talk. Because there were so many community concerns raised about Gabriel's anti-Muslim bigotry before the talk, this is what she had to say. A handful of radicals have hijacked a religion. All religions are peaceful. Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, they all have something to offer. Wait a second. 
that's literally the exact opposite of everything she's been saying her entire career, insisting that Islam itself is the enemy, and even mocking the idea that radical, dangerous Muslims are just a small minority. She seems to have so little regard for the truth that she'll say whatever is convenient at the time, even if it contradicts everything she stands for. By preying on the uninformed, Act for America has raked in millions of dollars, and Brigitte Gabriel has paid herself at least hundreds of thousands. But what's really disturbing is that we live in a climate where someone who espouses this kind of bigotry and hate can give law enforcement trainings, can be a frequent guest on television networks, can get high-ranking policymakers to participate in her events, and can visit the White House and claim a direct line to the president. There are many things we can do to turn the tide against hate, but one thing we shouldn't miss is holding our elected officials accountable when they legitimize bigotry and betray what this country is supposed to stand for.